All right, y'all, y'all, we are back. You look, man, there's some big news that is going on and could be game changer. It looks like there's some talks about the Wasp Rugby Club coming back. Now, for those who don't know, because we got people from all ranges and understandings and whatnot, uh, the Wasp Rugby is a former premiership rugby team. It's one of the oldest teams in England, one of the oldest teams in history, 158 years old. But despite all that, they have not been able to uh, be in existence for the last couple of years. Uh, back in October of 2022, uh, they eventually ran out of money. They went broke and eventually went into what they call administration, which is basically, you know, they 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 went bankrupt. They, they went bankrupt. It's, it's a fancy way of saying they went bankrupt. Uh, and it basically had to uh, shut down the whole club. And this one was at a time when we lost uh, uh, Worcester Warriors, uh, London Irish, and then it was the Wasp Rugby Club. But, but there's been talks where it's interesting that they might be able to come back. They might be able to do a little something. And uh, the talks are coming from a former player known as Kenny Logan. Uh, Kenny Logan is a former player. He used to play uh, for a series of, of professional teams, uh, including Glasgow Warriors, uh, Sterlington County RFC, and then subsequently, and, and Scotland International team. Well, it looks like he's trying to be able to bring this team back, and it looks like they are possibly looking at Major League Rugby as a place to be able to bring them through. Now, when I first heard it, I thought it was utter BS. You know, shout out Planet Rugby for being able to put out the story. I thought it was utter BS. Um, but um, apparently it, it's something to cough. Now, the conversation is more so about them being able to come back and uh, being able to actually have a real plan to do it. Uh, I think there is a need, and I think there is obviously within the community a very huge disheartening loss when it comes to losing something, a club that has been – such a prominent era for what is that almost six generations of people three four generations of people five generations of people give or take like that is a huge huge problem uh to lose but the fact of the matter that they still haven't figured out obviously fully their financial situation uh and being able to figure out how they can be able to establish themselves as a viable club moving forward i i do think that is 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 in it of itself but the potential of playing in other places like i think they talked about playing in the urc possibly playing in the mlr uh and i don't know even the idea of them coming back to premiership rugby i think <laughs> all of it is hilarious i would love to see them in the mlr i would think it would be financial ruin for the league and for the club because it would not establish a factor of them being able to make money consistently. And obviously the MLR has its own financial issues as well, but you know, the travel would be interesting and it would be like a nice uh, kind of thing that uh, NFL is trying to do with, you know, trying to do international games. Yeah. Let's, let's tweak up, tweak up the, uh, the, the engine of the MLR and bring in some, former premiership rugby league. And this is the domination of, of the industry that I like to see, but I don't think it would be a great idea though. Uh, obviously financially it wouldn't be a great idea uh, from a travel standpoint. It would be a horrific idea, um, but you know, entertainment wise, I think it would be great. Uh, one thing that they did say, and I do like that they were talking about this is that with um, it was uh Kenny Logan was was saying that one thing that they really need to make sure they do if they want to be able to come back is that they need to have their own grounds, their own training grounds, their own facilities. They need to be able to make money from it and build a business. They need to be able to build an arena rugby, uh, uh, an arena that rugby can be played in, but can also do multiple things. This is something that uh, has been really talked about uh, multiple times over on this show. Uh, my guy, Mick Feely, has really brought that to the fold of one of the things that makes other professional sports team actually financially viable is that when you own your location, it's the multiple usage and multiple streams of income that can come from it. Uh, and obviously, as of now, probably with a team like the Wasp, they were renting probably from the city and uh, 
limited in exactly how much they could expand. You can obviously play rugby. You can obviously sell concessions. But after that, like, what do you do with the field? What do you do with the team? What revenue do you also make? Sponsorship obviously can do so much. But again, you need to be able to have it. This is why things like uh, the NBA and uh, um, uh, New York Yankee, uh, New York Knicks owner is able to have both Madison Square Garden as well as the Las Vegas Arena um, at the same time because they make money off of the stadium. Um, one of the fact, one of the teams in the MLR that I think is absolutely top notch ha- for having done this, and this is what makes me believe that they're a team that, regardless of whatever happens, they're going to be able to be in place. Is the Houston SaberCats because they built their own stadium, so the owners have full control on it for both league games and non-league games that occur on the pitch, uh, whether soccer, football, whatever. Um, even equivalent to that, you know, talk about this for the NFL where, you know, all the owners own their stadium, even though they're partially paid for by or completely paid for by the cities themselves. But the additional advantage for that is the fact that they can sell off to other places. So having that be a focal point for recreating an actual business model that works is something that I think is legitimately important and is very, very Um, good to hear. Now the catch-22 for them is where's the space? Uh, Obviously in a place like uh, London and whatnot, like there's not exactly a plethora of space for stadiums and arenas. Uh, And and so it's the reason why there's so many shared elements to it. But, you know, Scott, you know, you put it in the right area, maybe take it up to Northern England. You know, maybe there's a lot more space. It might take it out of the community a little bit. I, I don't know everything works because, you know, travel, I don't know England travel like that. Knowing that an hour can be a huge change versus an hour in the States or here in Brazil is very in, insignificant um, in timing can play into how that community is able to support. But if you're able to control your arena, yo, I think this is something that needs to be done. And it's a conversation that should be had across board for as many rugby clubs especially professional rugby clubs as possible um but obviously that's very financially tasking but i do love the fact that the wasp are legitimately thinking about going to the mlr like there's a a possibility if they can get their ish together uh so let me know what you guys think let me know in the comments like yo do you feel like this is a good idea for a league like the mlr to be able to bring in wasp we already bring in former players uh, from other leagues, why not bring in a, a former team from another league as well, too? Or do you feel like the Wasps should resettle back into the Premiership Rugby or find themselves in the URC where they can continue to build in their own uh, backyard and maybe have better opportunity? I want to know what you guys are thinking on that one, y'all. Let me know what you guys are thinking on it. They're the wheat flour that you can eat. My name is Gift Gift Time at Bale. I'm here with Health Enhanced Foods. And I want to tell you about one of our best and most beloved products, our sweet white wheat baking mix. Now, this is the baking mix for those who are not really looking for something that's gluten free, but they are looking for something that they can eat that is going to still be healthy and is not going to be dangerous. White flour is typically a very processed, incredibly bleached flour, and it's not good for you. It's incredibly cheap for a reason. Our sweet white wheat bread mix is whole grain, dairy free, high in dietary fiber, free of additives, and is absolutely unprocessed and unrefined. With our sweet white wheat bread mix, you can feel like you're getting all the same rewards that you would get from poor white bread, but with all the nutritional value. You're able to still make your bread loaves or your cakes, your flat bread or your cookies but you don't have to feel like you are going to be robbing yourself of good carbohydrates. You can get the sweet white wheat bread mix from healthenhancedfoods.com. Absolutely go impress your friends and family with the greatest bread while not making them feel like they have to be gluten-free at the same time. No dangers, full body pleasures. Go ahead and get yours today. Let's go.
negative 10.